Hi everyone, welcome once again to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit further on ISO 20022 migration timelines. I had already made a video on ISO 20022 migration, the basics around it, etc. And that's there on the playlist for payments. Now, if you haven't watched this video, I would request you all to pause this, go and watch this video first because that covers the basics around ISO 20022 migration. First things first, uh, Swift has been delaying the timelines about the migration like there are organizations that are not yet ready with the migration activities that are required um, there are issues with respect to data truncation and, and a lot of concerns around what if the entire data set is not being handled appropriately and some of the data gets truncated etc so swift has now proposed a timeline wherein you can go ahead and you can structure your your work accordingly, right? You can you can break down all of the activities that are required for the ISO 20022 migration. And what I have done is I have put up a small sort of a timeline on the Miro board. And I will take you uh, on the Miro board now and I will walk you through the timeline. And this is a very, very customizable format. So if you feel like this format is going to be helpful for you, you can go to my website easyfight.com and you can get this template from there, right? And also, um, you can customize this format uh, depending upon your requirements as well if you need to. On the screen here, you can see the ISO 20022 migration timeline. As I have tried to skim everything for you in a very, very compact form. So the whole um, timeline has been structured into four different phases. So what is going to happen? What are the things that you need to do until March 2023? What will happen in March 2023? And then what will happen from March onwards until 2023 November? and what is going to happen from November 2023 onwards until November 25, 2025 that is. Right, so let's quickly go through the activities that you need to go through in March 2023. The first activity that we have to consider here is that MT remains the default syntax, right? So MT is uh, still the, the old syntax that will be used as the default syntax for cross-border payments and reporting messages. What will happen though is that if during this time, uh, we will have to have those trainings that are required for the cross -pay border payment reporting. And then of course, there is a very, very important step and a mandatory step that you have to upgrade the messaging interfaces because these interfaces have to talk to each other. And therefore it's very, very important that these interfaces are upgraded so that they can understand the new language or rather the new standard ISO 20022. Then there is another mandatory step which you can see here which is about uh, testing the inflow transition including receipt of multi-format mx messages so what is this inflow transition what are how is this going to affect what are the things that you should be uh, paying attention to there is a separate link i will put it in the description there and you can go through that link to understand some of the questions so that those are basically the faqs that you can also go and visit on the um, on the Swift website. Why a multi-format? Because now there are two formats that we're talking about, right? One is the uh, the MT message format and the second one is the MX message format. What happens then in March 2023 is, is over here, right? So you go live in March, which is, um, you know, just around the corner. And then uh, some financial institutions will begin, the others will follow. Some of these smaller institutions uh, probably may not be ready for this migration so for them it's gonna take some time then what happens is that some financial institutions will begin um, their own in-house translation and processing services so some financial institutions have got their um, you know systems in place they have got uh, you know some of the supporting work or the or the basic building work that is required and that's there in place so they are in a good position to start uh, using these services and, and start testing them as well. But some of the other banks, which are smaller, they will migrate only when they are ready. And until then they will use certain inflow translation or local translation services. Again, important links, everything will be there in the description. Go ahead, check it out, spend some time, right? And then what happens is we have got another step here, which is about, um, uh, you know, the sending of these MX messages. So all the banks can start sending the MX messages independent of their correspondent uh, preferred channel so there, there is no dependency anymore if they want they can start sending the mx messages so in november 2023 
um, and again, these timelines are a bit fluid according to me, right? I mean, not every institution would be ready. So obviously, Swift also knows that there are certain um, challenges in achieving these timelines. And we have already seen that there have been revisions made into this timeline. There might be some data truncation that may happen. And um, there is a body called as PMPG who has again laid down some recommendations. Now, these recommendations are strictly around the fact that um, if at all we go with this migration and institutions are not ready, what could potentially go wrong with the data, right? So there might be data drops, data truncation, call it whatever you want to. And they have actually published uh, a kind of a paper around it, right? I'll again put the link in the description. And, you know, the empty coexistence still continues. So the it's even though the institutions are going live and they would have already gone live in March, right? And they would have already, um, you know, uh, be in production with all of this um, if this migration but then the empty coexistence will still continue so it's not like you're going to cut off and shut off empty from day one now what is the time so november 2025 is what swift recommends that you should be holding on with the empty as well in parallel to your mx messaging right so basically multi-format messages and then in november 2025 we decommission the empty systems and that is when the overall migration will be completed now if you see here right they are taking a horizon of about two years from now um so you can just think uh, in fact more than two years right so here we have the entire 2023 we have the entire 2024 and it's november 2025 so almost three years close to three years is what you have in hand to complete this migration and which is where i'm saying that these these timelines are a little fluidic because um these systems have been running in for such a long time with these old empty messages right it's not practically possible for any company to shut down these messages overnight and there is one exception to this migration which is the empty 198 298 message so that message will still continue uh, beyond November 2025. That's the guideline um, laid down by Swift. Now, again, if there are any changes to this guideline uh, or if there is any substantial things that change around this overall migration process, I will reach out to all of you uh, through a video or a, or a community post and let you all know. So I hope you like this video. Uh, please make sure that you have access to this board if you need to for your migration. If you're working on a migration project, um, this board might be really helpful for you. What you can also do is you can use this as a building base and you can structure your own work packets around it, right? So it's pretty much like uh, an agile way of working where you can structure the things that you need. Um, this may not fully integrate with the boards or with the timelines, etc. that you may have in your in your organizations or for the clients that you're working on. But this can certainly work as a as a good sort of a as a basic block. Right. And you can always improvise on that. Uh, you can keep on if you are using Miro. I use this free version of Miro. So you can go ahead and you can you can check it out yourself and you can add some more sticky notes around the things that you want to take care of right so maybe you want to break down this train for cbpr plus into uh, some more sub components so you can add some sticky notes around it and say that i want to probably groom this work further right so that's where i think you can use this as a building base and you can refine this further for your for your own purposes so if you like this video please make sure that you give it a big thumbs up uh, like this channel and help me reach out to as many people as possible. I make videos and payments and I've also started uh, uh, putting out content on investment banking. Uh, so I just need support from all of you to continue further in this journey. Um, with this, I will take your leave and I will see you all once again in another exciting video pretty soon. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourselves. Goodbye.